3M, Clash of the Grinders, Student Edition, Season 2. An epic grinding and welding showdown. 12 students, one champion, starts now. Last time on Clash of the Grinders, six fierce competitors ignited the welding bays as they began crafting their custom dice. Now, they must leverage what they learned to make the most of their remaining time for this challenge. After the first day and having that time to think, what could I do better? I knew that in order for me to get a good, consistent 90 on each corner, I felt like I needed to go back on top on the edge and just run enough weld to stack up some metal on top. That way when I came back to grind, I could just knock it down flat on both ways, giving me a good 90. A lot of the prep that I don't think the other uh, competitors have done, I've already done. That'll give me a little bit more time to take away some metal and you know perfect it up a little bit and then give it a nice kind of polish on it, you know, just with the cherry on top. I set up my welder how it's comfortable for me since it's not so much a structural integrity test but more of a uh, visual and like polishing test. In the final hour and a half of this competition, the competitors will use their time to perfect their dice, aiming to stay focused as they grapple with the uncertainty of their chances to making the final round. It's hard to say who's going to win overall. All these guys have great talent. I think everybody has an even chance, so I can't say for certain who I think is going to win. Of course I am. Of course I'm going to go to the final. Or Ren. He's kind of like a silent, ambitious person, you know? Those are the people to watch out for, because like, he's kind of quiet, kind of sticks to himself. Sometimes, he's with the boys over there though, but uh, you know, while you're doing your stuff and they're just like relaxing, they're thinking how they're gonna get past you, you know, how to get one up. Welcome back to the second half of the semifinal round. Today you're gonna have an hour and a half to complete your die, and after that, you'll sadly have to say goodbye to three of your friends. Last night after the competition, we are all still kind of the same. Uh, some people were more relaxed, that they didn't have the stress of today's weight on them. When we're actually working, it's more of a competition, and we kind of treat it once we get out, we're friends again. So we try not to take business into our personal lives. Yeah, it is a little bit awkward, but we're still a crew, you know, red and blue. And the red and blue were still making purple. I definitely think that those who, that have been eliminated are still cheering people on. You know, they're, they got their people that they're rooting for. Sebastian, he's a monster. Like, he's amazing at what he does, you know? Everybody's good, though, so if I didn't say your name, you know, like, don't. If you're looking back over this, you know, nothing against you. But Jasmine, number one. So. I'm rooting for Titus all the way through. I'm thinking he can win the thing. You have an hour and a half to complete this challenge. Let's get after it. On a scale of one to 10, I'm probably a three or a four on the nervous scale. It's kind of hard to get me nervous because I've seen a lot of people get nervous and then they're good welders, but when they get nervous, they mess up. So I've always tried to just stay real calm. I'm pretty nervous about it, man. Looking at my welds, if I don't get my game up, man, I could be out for good. In this round, all points reset to zero. Players can earn up to 60 points, 20 each for technique, quality, and finishing. Only the top three scores will advance to the final round. Failure to make the cut means elimination. There, there's no process, there's no WPS to this. A lot of the competitors are upset about that. They're like, I want to follow WPS now. <laughs> like, when they gave us one, we didn't do it, but now that there is none, they're like, well, we want one. You're prepping a surface for paint. 70 RA or less. That's going to be a coarse surface conditioning 120 grit finish. Contestants, your time starts now! As the clock takes down, competitors rely on 3M personal protective equipment, 
and 3M abrasives to help enhance performance, safety, and the results of their work. So the welding aspect of the cube, it went pretty good and I chose my settings based off of the T-joint, kind of the perimeters of the settings that they had on the WSP. Uh, the speed glass welding helm is great, man. You get a lot of good visibility. I like it, you know, you just gotta sort through it and make sure you're on the right level. It's great, you know, perfect vision, you know, there's no delay in anything. Out of all the welding helmets that I've like used, it's like top of the game for me. I knew right from the point that I decided I was going to stick some more metal on there to weld with, I knew for sure that I could do that and still be able to be fine with some time because I knew that using that fiber disc and the previous challenges, I knew it helped me knock down a whole lot of metal in a very short amount of time. After I finished welding it, I started off with the fiber disc. And I think I started off there okay. But the thing that messed me up was that the faces of the cube, where I knew it was gonna take a long time. You can be a lot more efficient with good tools and good abrasives. Especially that fiber disc, I'm gonna tell y'all, that thing is wild. I've never experienced anything like it. I mean, if you need to remove the weld, that's the first thing I'm grabbing. I picked up a grinding wheel because originally I had a flat disc on, but it wasn't getting through the mill scale as fast as I wanted it to. So I'd made the decision to switch to a grinding wheel, and just kind of rough up the surface and then go back with the fab disc and kind of smooth everything down, which worked a whole lot faster. So I really had a lot of time at the end to play with how smooth I can get it. The only hard part was really getting it level and set together. You can't just have it like a square, you have to have it hang over a certain amount on each piece to have like a groove to put your weld in. So that took a long time to do, but I got it pretty good where I could just run it and it was nice and a little bit excessive. So when I ran that grinding wheel, it just smoothed everything down with the sharp corners. Like the 3M abrasives, I think it makes it so much easier. They can last longer than regular ones, like the ones I have back at home. No good, no bueno. <laughs> Each competitor uses all of their reserves to craft a die that will captivate the judges and secure a spot in the final round. After I got it to roughly the shape I wanted it to and like kind of how smooth I wanted it, after doing a couple passes on each side with the coarse one, I switched to the light one and spent the majority of my time just getting it real smooth and shiny and getting them edges. It's a bonus for me that I work in a fab shop and sometimes we have those rush jobs come through and you know we got our foreman and our owners breathing down our neck to get these parts out. So. I just kind of stuck to what I knew. I tried to keep my composure as best as I could. Um, I know a couple of guys mentioned that they were able to take some things away from me that I had been doing to help them out some. So it made me feel a little bit better about you know being able to do what I was able to do up under that pressure because it dang sure was a lot of it. I was hoping that my welding was going to basically carry me because that, that was my strong suit and I knew that that was my strong suit. That was the part that I had focused the most and the fitting up and everything, I focused the most on that because I knew that if I got that at least, the finishing wasn't really gonna be that much of an issue. Those wheels, those um, fiber disc and the other disc, I, I did, I have no experience with it and prior to this competition. I realized I didn't have enough material on my corners um, after the initial weld up and um, you know, came back 
put plenty of weld over it. Um, I went to grinding. Um, I don't have enough material on some of these corners. I went back over it and I got porosity. Uh, I think I can, I think it'll be okay. Justin was the only competitor in this round to wear a full 3M powered air respirator system. Afterward, Nate seized the chance to discuss this choice with him and the other competitors. So let's talk about your PPE choice. How'd you feel in that PAPR system? I like having that extra airflow. Right. Yeah, I'm not used to having nothing like that. It's Spoiled. Basically just, yeah, it's basically just air conditioning. The difference between you two, like he's covered in sweat and you're like, you ain't got any sweat on you. Not hardly. If I do, it's all up under this jacket of mine. Oh uh, no, it's hot in that mask. Uh -huh. I mean, you're breathing, you're getting all that fog and stuff on you. I'd wipe my glasses off like two or three times. Yeah, I'd say outside of having the benefit of filtered air and everything, you basically just got built-in air conditioning. Mm -hmm. I like that part about it. Heck yeah. With the competitors now waiting in the wings, the judges carefully evaluate each piece. Kyle focuses on technique, Mark on quality, and Mackenzie on the finish. Take a look just at that seam and you'll yeah. see if it's wavy or not. Cause a lot of that's gonna have to deal with, yeah. A lot of that deals with that fit-up work. So if that fit-up work was bad and that weld was bad, it's gonna be real wavy and choppy. You were choppy. thinking her welds were really consistent? If she would've just went a little bit smoother with it, she didn't have to remove all that weld, yeah. you know, where other people did, cause they bulked up so much. Hers were perfect. She could've just smoothed it out and really focused on the face of the die. She felt the pressure from the time, because when she was doing welds, she was so methodical. Yeah. And then she felt like she had to go back and do, I don't know, mill scale removal. And then I think that's when she started dumping edges. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's what happened. Because she did quite a bit with the clean and strip. And clean and strip is great for prep or paint removal, but it's going to take a long time. What do you got for Tyler? I'm impressed with him. I mean, I, I thought he was moving really quick at first. This right here, all these little pinholes right there, it's all porosity. It's all like just super oxidized weld metal in there, okay? So he didn't get good. I think this is just bad welding technique. Watching him weld, he had an excessive stick out mm. so that his wire was out a little bit farther and his cup or his nozzle was farther away. That shielding gas wasn't really getting in there that much. But then you can see uh, when he put that weld in, if he would have taken his time, let that weld fill out more, when he grinds that down, you're not gonna see those little edges. It's gonna be kind of overfilled, and we'll see that as we go down the line. Here we got Ren. Ooh, that is silky smooth. So he prepped this with a grinding wheel, which, you know, is quite interesting to watch. He put a lot of emphasis on getting that nice right yeah, angle on there too. Yeah, that corner is pretty, pretty sharp. He also tack welded it first, right? Yeah. And then brought it back. Yeah, he tacked it up. And I honestly think he brought it back because he had to grind tacks off to refit it because he didn't like his fit up, which is smart. If you don't yeah. like it the first time, don't weld it out. Right, right. So. See how this corner comes down to a teardrop? I would think that that would be from grinding because he didn't have to really remove all that much. He could have really tapered it in so that it was a nice corner, but maybe overcompensated. And then this was Justin right here. He was the only one to use a fiber disc at first, and I think it really helped speed up the process. Yeah. He actually started with, I had my started notes, he started flap. with flap and then he switched to, to fiber. fiber. Yep. In order to really get that nice corner, you know, you want to build it out a little bit farther. Instead of him just running a single weld where that weld would be very uh, convex and curved around that edge, he put a few welds on there to build it out so then he could shave it down and really get that edge on there. Yeah. So there are a couple spots right in here where it looks yeah. like it got low. It's a little choppy and there's a couple divots in there. I think he, he really used up every second. I don't think he could have finished earlier though. Let's start with Sebastian. Oh, do I have a lot to say about this. Yeah. If you do not fit your pieces properly, you cannot put a proper weld in there. And what I had seen was a very poor fit up so when he put that weld in there, it was a very poor weld that did not meet that profile. He spent so much time on prep that he was almost trying to finish the parts before welding, it seemed, and then just didn't leave himself enough time to weld. Yeah. He did a good job getting like 90 degrees. Like, I mean, he, yeah. he worked hard to do that. All right, we got Titus. So what is kind of interesting is like, you just see the rounding off here. Um, I just don't know how consistent, and then like maybe some porosity in this corner. Let's take a look. You can still see that seam. Again, that's where that plate is, and if it's a nice straight line, he dug too far into that corner, so he removed too much weld. Yeah. Again, exposing that seam. And that corner right there. On the plus side, in terms of finishing, I was really impressed that he knew to turn the speed of the tool down a little bit when using non-woven. He, he put a really nice finish on this. But I mean, look you, at how You many... are seeing like the... 
Yeah. Yeah. You, you're seeing that change in like levelness there. There was attention to detail. Yeah. You guys got your work cut out for you. We're going to see how it's all going to total up. Yeah. yeah. That'll be the big thing where some of the best welds were, maybe not the best yeah. finishes, well, yeah. but. Should we go deliberate then? Yeah. Yep. Let's go talk. All right. We've made it to the semifinal elimination. Three of you will be going home today. Three of you will be moving on to the finals. Let's get it started. Tyler, please step forward and present to the judges. I'm looking for edge consistency. I'm looking for corner consistency. I appreciate nice 90 degree angles you got on most edges. Your finish work was really good. I was really impressed with how you prepped the surface for the weld as well. Just looking over it, your welds were okay until you hit that one. And you know what one I'm talking about, okay? So unfortunately, that came through. Jasmine, your prep work was good. Your fit up work was perfect. And your welds, phenomenal. You were putting that nice, like almost 45 degree edge on, on things very consistently. And then I think you started to feel the time pressure. And that's when that consistency suffered a bit. I wasn't as impressed with the finish on this one as I was on the others, but I think a lot of that came back to time. All right, Ren. Prep work, good. Fit up, okay. It was just okay. You could have spent a little bit more time getting those plates aligned where they needed to be. I was really impressed with what you were able to do and maintain quality with the grinding wheel. You, you chose the hardest path, my friend. Very methodical with your approach. Saw you numbering the corners of the, each piece, and as you got ready to have this be prepped for paint, you made sure that all of it was prepped, which was a big bonus, so nice job. Justin, one thing I'm gonna give you a lot of credit for is the extra welds that you put on so that you could get that nice corner. I was impressed with this. I noticed you were the first to get the die grinder out, put a, you know, make sure that this had some work done to it as well. Having that extra beef on that weld got you some nice 90 degree edges and they're fairly consistent. Little bit of waviness, but overall, good job. Good prep. Your biggest issue was dumping those corners, right? I mean, even as you look at it, how it sits here, I can get, I can get pens, tips under a lot of those corners because they're just that much pulled up. The cube itself has a great finish. I just want to say great job also remembering to lower the tool speed so when you're working with the scotch Brite to really get you know as wide and consistent finish as you did. Um, there was some porosity that came through but aside from that I thought this was really really well done so good job Titus. Thank you Titus. Last but not least Sebastian. I thought that you worked really hard on the weld prep piece, but maybe too long on that, so then it was kind of tough when you got over the welding. Still a good finish on it, not as consistent as I would like to see. Good prep work going into it. Your fit up work left a lot to be desired. I think that porosity kind of hurt you. A couple areas where maybe that disc dug in a little more than you expected it to. You actually probably did the best job of everybody at the corners, so you didn't dump them that bad. This is all really great advice because we're moving into the final round. With that being said, it's time for the eliminations. I'm reading this as I see it. So Sebastian and Jasmine, step forward, please. Jasmine, you are in. Congratulations. Sebastian, you are out. I'm really sorry to hear that. Come over here and let's, uh, you got any final words for those judges? Uh, yeah, I, you know, I'm honored to be here. I'm excited that I made it this far. And you know, all your guys' advice and everything that you guys have given to us, like, it's amazing. It's really gonna work out in the long run, so. Thank you. It, it keeps you humbled a lot when you try so hard on other things and you lose. As soon as they said uh, Jasmine and Sebastian, I said, yeah, for sure, I'm out. I came in here ex not expecting to be in the top three, actually. I came here just for the fun, you know, the experience. And right off the bat, when I, I met all the contenders, they were really good. Like, I was shaking in my boots <laughs> to see that I beat a lot of other people is crazy to me. It gets me emotional because I didn't even believe in myself. You know, 
My teacher did, my parents did, my everybody did, but I didn't. So it kind of makes me emotional right now that, wow, I did it. <sighs> I did it. All right, Ren and Titus. Titus, I'm sorry to say you are out. Ren, congratulations, you are in. Go join your classmates. We'll see you in the finals. Titus, any final words for the judges? Thanks for the opportunity. I've uh, definitely learned a lot, even just through these past three days. I think I've picked up a lot of new skills that you know maybe I haven't gotten at home. So appreciate it. Done really good, Titus. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, it was unfortunate to be eliminated. Uh, you know, I was hoping to make it to the final round, but clearly that didn't happen. But I'm all right with that. It feels amazing to get through the uh, dice challenge and on to the final round. Last but not least, Justin and Tyler. Justin, you are in. Congratulations, we'll see you in the finals. Tyler, you are out. Really sorry to hear. Let's talk about some final words for the judges. What have you got to say? Uh, I know what I did wrong, and I know definitely what I could have done better. Ferocity definitely hurt me a lot. It's all my fault, so you know, I can't really sit here and hate on anybody for it. Right on, buddy. I love that you're learning, so all of you. Yeah. Good job, Tyler. I come up off that high, and now I realize I got a lot more weight on me going to this next round. I got porosity underneath that 3M logo, and I didn't take time. I didn't go clean it out. I didn't do anything, and it ended up knocking me out of the competition. What I really could have done, I could have took that scotch right and hit that weld before I welded it, and it would have completely changed the outcome of it. And that's, that's the thing, confidence doesn't always equal good results. I made that mistake, I didn't go back and fix it, and I paid the price for it. I kind of knew that the, the elimination was coming. You know, yesterday, when we first started the challenge, uh, everything was going good, you know, my surface prep for the welds was going good. I had a little bit of trouble with trying to keep everything flush together because I tried to do multiple plates at once. Probably shouldn't have done that. When I got into my booth, my first like three sets of the side of dice went good. Everything was lined up pretty good. And then the uh, number four side, I went to go place it in and I thought I had it tacked up good and so I tacked it in and I couldn't break my tacks. And so that got me. So it was just crooked, and it really messed up how the end result of my welds came out. I was feeling good. I felt pretty confident the whole time. I was feeling pretty far ahead. I think it was a matter of probably putting too much pressure, especially on those corners. Even though you're trying to get it all nice and smooth on those corners, you kind of do a little bit of a downward motion, and that definitely takes out those corners a lot faster than you think. But then just kind of towards the end, it's hard to see a lot. I mean, I was drip and sweat like none other, so it was kind of hard to see my uh, plates, so I definitely could have gotten in there a little bit more with those scotch brights and cleaned it up a little bit better. And I knew that Tyler was going to be my biggest competitor going into it when the other first two groups went and that left me and him. I said, oh my gosh, it, yeah, he it drove me insane. I mean, I knew that too, it was going to come down to was me or him, and I guess he just made a small mistake and you know, it just kinda it was the determining factor of him, you know, going out. I hate to have seen it happen to him. He's a great competitor, but you know, I feel like that maybe that opened the window for me a little bit better too. So I feel as if everybody came out here and did what they were supposed to do and did what they were said they were gonna do. It's just that everybody has bad days. And as you see here, no matter how skilled or talented you are or how bad you want it, everybody has those days. Each and every single one of them told me had I not had that mistake, then um, I'd probably still be moving on in the competition. Um, if I could talk to my grandma, my God, I'm gonna cry. I would look at her and I will tell her, well, I'm saying it in English person and say it in Spanish. Um, well, I would tell her that I did it, maybe, I hope you're proud of me. I know your, your, your kids maybe didn't get to where you were hoping, but I hope that 
I made you proud. I hope that I um, exceeded your expectations. Ma, yo te quiero decir que te quiero mucho y te quiero decir gracias por apoyarme porque desde que era chiquita yo solo quería hacer a toda mi familia orgullosas de mí y ojalá y todos estén orgullosos de mí pase lo que pase si gano o no gano yo solo quiero que estén orgullosos de mí Get ready for the thrilling kickoff of the final round of this competition. It's guaranteed to blow you away. Who will emerge triumphant? Tune in to Clash of the Grinders, Student Edition, Season 2, to find out.